Today's video, I'm going to be concentrating on hosting the bill that we created on the previous video in order for you to give a WebXR experience to your clients. So let's say that you want your clients to review you know, your VR experience over the web and you want to host it in a hosting provider. That's what I'm going to show you today. It's going to be very technical and it's going to go into a lot of details. So this is going to be a long video, but I'm really excited about it. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so we got a lot of stuff to do today and I'm really excited about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the scene that we have right here and we're going to be hosting it in our own hosting provider, which in my case is going to be DigitalOcean. So let's go ahead and get it built. So I'm going to go to File, Build Settings. Make sure that you have the WebXR Samples Desert WebXR scene open. If you don't, just go ahead and click here or just drag it and drop it from the WebXR folder. Once you do that, just go ahead and click on Build. And when you click on Build, it's going to ask you for a folder. I already did that, so it's already inside of the this folder right here. So just go ahead and do it. And I'm going to close out of these, and I'm going to go ahead and focus on the DigitalOcean. So if you go to DigitalOcean.com and create an account, they are a really great hosting provider. I've been using them for years. And th there's no affiliation whatsoever. I just like them, and that's why I'm doing the video. So what I'm going to do is I already have three different sites already set up. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one. Just click on Droplets. Once you click on Droplets, it's going to ask you, you know, what operating system do you want to use? I'm going to use Ubuntu because it's the one that I'm familiar with. But if you want to use Fedora, Debian, CentOS, just go ahead and do that. I'm going to be using the standard plan. Then go into, you know, depending on how much traffic you're going to get, you, you can select, you know, different options. I'm going to select the $5 option because this is just a prototype. I'm also going to tell it where in the world do I want this box to live. And I'm going to put it in New York. So New York one is fine. Then you can also tell it whether you want to use a password to authenticate or you want to use SSH keys. I already have a key, but I want to show you that process before, you know, before I do and select one. So what you want to do is you want to either you can download what's called Potty and Potty Gen. And you can go ahead and search for that by just going into, you know, searching from Potty and then clicking in here. And this is going to tell you, it's going to look old school, but it's actually used still today. And you can click on latest release. And there's a couple options that you can download. You can download Potty. You can also, Potty is going to be like a, like a terminal that is going to allow us to telnet to the remote box. You can also use the Pigeon, which is going to allow us to load a key. Or you can use PuttyGen to generate a key. So in my case, I'm going to be using PuttyGen. I'm going to be using the Pigeon. And I'm just going to be using PowerShell to be able to access it. So already download them. But if you haven't downloaded, select the one that works with your, you know, with your CPU. In my case, I'm using 64, CP 64 and 64. So I just downloaded those. Once you have those downloaded, when you, what you have to do is let's go ahead and open it up. I'm going to go into my desktop. And in my desktop, I already have those downloaded. In fact, let's go ahead and just create a folder. And I'm just going to put them inside of a folder so that this is not too out of control. You just put them in there and then just double click. And these are going to be the three ones. So you can download and, and open Potty if you want to do that to re, to connect to the to the server that we're creating. I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going, I'm going to be using PowerShell. And if you want to generate a new key, all you have to do is just click on Generate Key. And this is going to tell you, OK, what key do you want to generate? I'm going to be selecting the SSH to RSA key, which is which is what DigitalOcean is what will require. Once you do that, you, you can just click on Generate. And you can just move your mouse around. And that's going to generate a, basically a key for you. And you can put a passphrase and confirm a passphrase. I'm going to recommend that you do that. In my case, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to worry about that. And I'm also going to be copying the public key here, because we're going to need it for DigitalOcean. Digital so I'm just going to copy that. And I also need to save those. So let's go ahead and save those. I already saved them into here, into my own you know, folder here. But what I'm going to do, let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and delete that so I can show you how to do that. I'm going to create a new folder. And then DigitalOcean. And normally, this lives in a SSH folder. For this case, I'm just going to do it here. And if you notice, I click on Save Public Key. So I'm just going to save the public key. And this is going to be my DigitalOcean and then Public Key. And then that's going to save it. And I'm going to also save my private key. It's going to go ahead and hit yes, because I don't want to set a passphrase right now. And I'm going to do the same thing in here, except I'm just going to call this one private. And then, like I said, I already copied the public key. So you can just go ahead and close this. 
and then the page in, go ahead and double click it. And in my case, it's already running, but if it wasn't running, it's going to load like this. I'm going to click on Add Keys, and I'm going to be adding the key that I already added, which is going to be my private key. And then if you go into the paging itself, you can click on View Keys, and you can see that now I have two keys loaded, and that's because I'm using a key for something else. So that's all we need to do as far as like key setup. So let's go ahead and go back into DigitalOcean and, and finish the setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on new SSH key and I'm going to paste the key. Just give it a name. I'm just going to go ahead and say Windows key. We can just say test2. And if you're using Mac, and I'm not going to be too biased here, but Mac is a lot easier than, than to do this in Windows. In Mac, all you have to do is just you know call that command. And then, and then you're pretty much ready to go and it just saves it in the appropriate directories. But anyways, I'm, I'm, more, I'm trying to be more of Windows and Mac at the same time, half and half. But once you do this, just go ahead and click on Add SSH Key. Then that's really all we need to do. You can give it a tag if you want to organize this. You can also give it a name. We can just call this WebXR Demo. I think that's fine for now. And then just click on Create Droplet. So what this is going to do is going to create that box somewhere in the world, when in our, in our case, it's going to be in New York City. And we need to do a couple more things. We're going to need to create a user, because that user, it's going to be the one that needs to authenticate. And it's also going to be the one that we're going to be using to host this. So now let's go ahead and go into it. And you can see that we have the IP address here. I'm going to copy that, and we can put it right here, because we're going to be using that quite a bit. On the access, we're going to need to log into this box. So I want to create a new user for that. So I'm going to click on Launch Console. And right now, we don't really have a user. So we're going to have to create a user. And right now, we don't know what the, what the password is. So let's click on Reset Group Password. So what this is going to do is going to be sending us an email. And I can just copy and paste that password. With that password, we can create a new account. All right, guys. So it looks like they sent me my new password. So let's go ahead and go into my email. And I'm going to copy this password here because we're going to need it. Then now let's go ahead and click on Launch Console. It's going to launch the console and load it for me. And what we're going to do is we're going to be just using root for now. And then we're going to be just creating a new account. OK, so the login is going to be root. It's going to tell you to put in the password. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it. There we go. It's going to ask you for your current password. Just going to paste it. And then it's going to make up a password. In this case, it's going to be something that I just going to remember. There we go. And we should have now access to, to the console. So what I need is there's a couple of things that I never remember. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull my notepad here. And we're going to need to create a new user. In my case, I'm just going to create the Dilmer user. So I'm just going to say add user Dilmer. And I want, I want to add this user to, to basically a list of pseudo so that I have access to the world. And it's going to ask me for a password. Let's go ahead and make one password up. And we can just go ahead and type in. I don't need to put in all this information. Of course, if this was a production box, I would probably do it. But in our case, we don't need to do that. Then let's go ahead and add this user to the list of sudo. So I'm just going to do this command here, sudo. And then Dilmer is going to be a sudo. So now what I need to do as well is I want to be able to log into that box from my PowerShell. So I don't. I want to just provide, and this is not really secure. This is just a demo right now, but for now this is okay. We can just do. It's gonna go ahead and do sudo, and go into this file here. I'm going to be using vim, etc, and then ssh, and let's go ahead and just copy copy this, copy this entire command here, and sudo vim. There we go, and that should take us to this file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to search for the, there's a key here that is going to allow us to, to authenticate with a password, which is really not super secure. It really says in here, make sure you don't do, you don't do that. I was going to do it because I need to transfer files, and then you can lock it down after the fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the password authentication to yes. I'm going to close out of this. And then we can just restart the SSH, basically the SSH service. SSH D service. So I'm just going to do this, SSH, and then reload. And that's going to be reloading that. So now what I can do is if we, if we go here and I open up a new, basically a new terminal, let me go ahead and close out of this terminal because this one is going to be the previous one that I was messing with. And it's going, going to go ahead and open a new session. 
So remember, we have a we have an IP address, and I already have a user. So what I can do now is I can do, you know what? I want to SSH to that box with Dilmer, and this is going to be the IP address. It's going to ask us for a password, of course. It's going to be entering our password, and now I should have access to that to that box completely. So, a couple of things that we're going to need in order for you know to be able to host. We can close out of this one. So I want to be able to push the bill. So if we go back into our bill and we look at our desktop here, remember that we created a new bill and that bill is in the WebXR. So we need to be able to host this file. So we're going to need a web server to do that. So if we go here to how to install Nginx, Nginx is a web server that I use quite a bit for a lot of my things. So this is going to walk you through the steps that you need to do. And, and I'm going to be honest, I don't do this very frequently. So I'm just going to go through those steps. So one of them that we need to do is I'm going to be updating basically some, some of the tools that I have in here already. It's going to ask me for my password again. And this is going to be basically updating all the packaging system. It's going to download, it's going to read, and it looks like everything, everything was successful. And then the next command here is going to allow us to install Nginx. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste that. And it's going to say that you want to continue because this is going to require some space, and that's OK. We need to we need to install it, so we don't really care about space right now. And well, in your case, you want to make sure you have enough space. But for this demo, I know we do. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure we are, we are adjusting the firewall. So it looks like these are the available applications. We're just going to be looking at this command, and then we can enable the nginx HTTP because we're going to be hosting that on HTTP. And it looks like the rules were updated, and we can just go ahead and run this other command. And status is inactive. Looks like it should be OK. I don't know why. I think this is assuming that you know the firewall is enabled. And in my case, I went through this already, and everything worked. So it's going to go with that. And then let's make sure that the Nginx web server is running. So we can do. We can just type it out, systemctl, status, and we can ask for the status of Nginx. And you can see that it's currently running, so we're good to go. And in fact, if we want to make sure that everything is running, we can use, let's go ahead and go into Notepad here. We can access and see if we can access the, basically, the IP address. And this is our new box, and we are already hosting the, the Nginx. So this is an example page that they provide to you. So, so far, so good. We have Nginx installed. We're getting the welcome screen. So the next thing that I want to do, let me just make sure, these are just some commands that you can, you know, you can learn to use. I, don't, I already know them, so we don't need to go through those. But I do recommend that you understand them in order for this to work. So these are going to be some of the steps that we need in order for us to connect and, and to actually host the, the files. So we need to go, let's go ahead and go back into PowerShell. And let me show you a couple of things in here. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So you guys can see what I'm typing. And there we go. So if we look at what we have already inside of ours, so if I do var, and then we can do www. You can see that there's already an HTML file in there. And this is the one that we're hosting. So if I do vim and look at that, so that's going to be the exact same message that you see if we go and access the IP address through the web browser, because Nginx is already hosting this file for us. So what we need to do is we need to tell Nginx, you know what, Nginx, I need to host something new. So we need to create a new, basically a new directory to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back here. Let's go ahead and go back. And I'm going to say, I'm going to create a new directory. And we're going to be calling this. We can put it under var. And we can do www. And this one, we can just we can just call it webxrdemo.com. Even though we don't have the domain, it's OK. We're just going to be using the an IP address anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and create it there. And then just move this a little bit to the side so we can see the whole thing. So now we need to tell the system, OK, what user we're going to be you know, running that folder under. So I'm just going to be using Dilmer. So we're going to do a Sean. And then this is going to be make it recursive. We're going to be using the user that we're already logging with to be basically the owner of that, of that folder. I'm going to do var and then www, webxr demo. And if we do an ls and dash la, and we copy, or we just type that out. You can see that the now that user is going to be the owner. And it looks like the user is the owner, and also root is the owner. So well, root is the owner of the prior of the parent folder, and then root is the owner of that folder. So it looks like we're good to go. 
And then we also need to set up the appropriate, the, the, the recommended security on that folder. So I'm just going to be using sudo, and then we're gonna use shima, and then let's do 755 var www, and then we're gonna be just telling it, okay, which folder we're gonna be giving that security, and it's going to be the folder we just created. And then what this is saying is, okay, now that you have that, then you can go ahead and just basically put that an index. So we can just go ahead and do that, an index HTML, so that we can test it before we do anything more complicated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new file in there. It's going to be, it's going to be under var, and then www, and we can just say index.html. There we go. And in here, I'm just gonna say, you know what, I want to create an HTML file, and it's just going to be, this just reminds me of when I started to learn HTML many years ago. We're just gonna do something very simple, just h1, and we can just say, welcome to the, we can say web XR demo, and for some reason, my PowerShell doesn't show all the characters. I'm just going to ignore that for now. Just know that I typed it in. Okay, so we have something to show HTML. We also have the folders that they require. So the next thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need to set up what's called the, the actual route that is gonna tell the system where to go. So to do that, I'm going to be copying this set of code. And, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna say, okay, you know what? I want to host this website on this port. I want to be able to tell the system when, when somebody hits that port, which is port 80, which is the default port, if you don't type anything, any ports, then I want to go to this folder. In our case, it's gonna be the WebXR demo folder. And then we're gonna be telling it the location. So let's go ahead and get that going. So we're gonna go ahead and do a nano, exactly like this says right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do, let's see, we're just gonna do Vim. And I'm not gonna do nano because I'm not used to using the editor. I'm just gonna go ahead and use Vim. And I'm gonna do etc, nginx, and then sites available. And then this one is gonna be webxrdemo.com. This is gonna be the role that we're going to be creating. I'm going to go into basically insert mode. And then we can just paste what, what I just copied. And one caveat here that I need to do is I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using the IP address. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the IP address. In your case, you're gonna be using a DNS. So for this demo, I don't want to, I don't really have one right now. So I'm just go ahead, go ahead and gonna be using the IP. So let's go ahead and paste that IP there. And then I'm gonna separate it by columns. And then let's just change a couple of things in here. This one is going to be the WebXR demo. Let's go ahead and remove this. So this is gonna be whatever you're going to be naming yours. And this is gonna be com. And the index, this is gonna be the page that it's going to be accessing. So it's going to be index.html, so that's fine. And this one's I'm just going to be renaming, even though we're not gonna be using those, that's okay. And I'm also going to be renaming this one, WebXR demo. And let me make sure that everything, everything looks right. And let's go ahead and close this. And now we have our sites available. We basically added a new rule. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a connection, just like it says right here, so that the sites available that we added, it's going to be to site, it's going to be linked with sites enable. So let me go ahead and make this one a little bit smaller so we can see the whole thing. So I'm gonna do LN, I'm gonna do a sudo ln dash ash and then etc. Nginx, and then sites available. And then we're gonna do the web. And then we're gonna go into etc, Nginx, and sites enable. So this is gonna tell the Nginx that there's a link between these and then the, the sites enable folder. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And that should be pretty much everything that we need to do there. The other thing that they recommend that you do is that you remove the, the symbol on this directive. So we're gonna do that as well. So let's do sudo vim etc, nginx, and then this is gonna be a file that you're gonna be touching quite a bit. So just get familiar with that file if you wanna get into web servers and, and how to route information. So let's go ahead and find it here. And I think we're close, oh, we probably already passed it. So we're looking for server names. And let's see if I can find it, here we go. If not, we could we could have just do, done a search, but let's go ahead and say, change this to, to be not commented out. I'm gonna save it, looks like that is saved. And then this is gonna tell us to that we can test our configuration. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to be doing Nginx and then dash T to test it. 
And it looks like the syntax is OK on our file and also the configuration. So it looks like everything is good to go. Let's go ahead and copy this command to make sure that we restart the Nginx server. And let's see if everything works. If everything works, we should see welcome to the WebXR demo. So, so far, so good, right? We got everything working there. So now that we have that, we want to go ahead and copy the basically the build files that I have here over to the web server. So what I'm going to do instead of having to, you can use a tool called it, basically SCP to transfer those files. Or what I could have done is I could do, I could use another tool called, which I just downloaded, which is called Win SCP, and that's going to allow us to, you can either do FTP or you can do the SCP. I'm going to use, I think, SCP in this case. And we can just authenticate the same way that we authenticate with SSH. I'm going to go ahead and paste the IP address here. I'm going to go ahead and type in my username and password. And it's going to ask us to, if we want to cache these, basically the, this key. I'm going to say yes. And let's see if we can authenticate. If we don't, if we authenticate, everything should be okay. It looks like everything is fine. So now with this tool, I can just you know use a user, a user friendly application to do this. We can go ahead and go back, and I'm gonna go into var. Remember the folder where we put our our test WebXR demo. Here it is. I can double click it, and what I'm gonna do is I'm, instead of just having that, I'm going to go ahead and copy everything here. And we can just drag it and drop it. To be honest, just drag everything and drop it in here. And let's see, it looks like we have some permissions deny in that folder. Let me see why that is. Oh, it looks like everything is working. It's transferring. For some reason, it gave us some headaches. And looks like it's looks like it worked. I don't know why I had that. Let me try, let me try that one more time. Just to make sure. And permission deny. Oh, okay, on the actual index. And I think that might be because I have it, I might have it open. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to stop Nginx. And let me see if I can do this one more time. And I'm getting a permission deny on that file. So let's go ahead and look at the permissions of that file. So I'm going to go ahead and do, let's see, H, let's see, it's going to be under var, and then www. Now if we do an ls, we have our web XR demo. Let's go ahead and look at all the permissions here, including so the issue that we can't really override that is because for some reason that file, and I think I didn't override the permissions on that file, is already is assigned to root. So what I want to do is I want to assign that to Dilmer. That way we have access to doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say Dilmer, Dilmer, and then that's going to be sudo, and I'm going to go ahead and assign the permissions. And let me see why that is. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and go and look at our command here. And okay, I think I missed, I might have missed the R in that command. So let me try that one more time. And let's try this. Okay, so it doesn't like that command. For some reason, I thought we could do that. So we'll just do the same command that they are asking about here user and then dollar symbol user. And I think I got everything right. It's going to be sudo. Oh, it's not shimon because this one is for security. That's what happened. That's why it's, it's shown. And now we can do ls la. And it looks like everything is fine now. So I like when we're going through issues together because that helps us. So let's go ahead and drag and drop everything. Make sure that everything works. It looks like everything is working. In this case, I'm also going to get my other command ready so we can restart the web server. And let's go ahead and restart it. OK, so remember that we need to run this on the on Mozilla and Firefox, so that's what we're going to be doing. Let's go ahead and open it up. Go ahead and remember the IP address that we have. We're going to be pasting this in here. And if everything works, looks like it's going to, it's loading. And this is great because now we can give this to our friends and we can host our web VR experiences. I go ahead and hit continue. And it looks like everything is rendering. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out LearnXR.io where I'm doing VR training. I'm also going to be doing augmented reality training. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.